Australian forestry industry is being shaken up all over the country. Victoria has banned native logging from early 2024, though court injunctions effectively stopped it late last year. Court action to halt logging is also underway in Tasmania and New South Wales. Western Australia's industry will also end next year. The Greens and environment groups are now pushing for an Australia-wide ban on logging, an idea also supported by some members of the Federal Labor Party. But Victorian timber workers and towns dependent on logging are deeply worried about their future. Earlier this year, they were given six months notice logging in native forests would end, overturning an earlier state government decision to close it in 2030. Environmentalists contesting the legality of logging in central and eastern Victorian native forests won a Supreme Court injunction, halting harvesting in late 2022. Forestry Australia, the peak body representing forest scientists, farm foresters and forestry professionals, condemns the decision. It's very concerning that the future of our forests seems to be now being determined by political ideology and complex legalities um, and all these lawsuits that are coming about and challenging the way our forests are being managed. It's actually um, disempowering and undermining the forest management professionals who are trying to do good work to manage our forests effectively. The government admits the threat of costly court action was a major reason for the early end to logging. That was a, a significant element um, that brought about the decision in the end. We had to ensure that were, the industry was paid, even though it couldn't cut wood, because we needed to retain the skills and the capabilities uh, just in case things changed. But the advice, and as it has panned out with subsequent court decisions and appeal decisions, the uncertainty is permanent. And it's a deep uncertainty for numerous rural and remote timber communities across Victoria, where alternative employment opportunities are almost non-existent. I think towns like Orbost that are, you know, really isolated from other areas are extremely hard hit. You know, the social fabric of that town has basically been torn apart. For Wellington Shire in eastern Victoria, the council says 600 jobs now hang in the balance. The impact is that uh, ash timber over in Hayfield is the biggest hardwood timber mill in Australia, employs a lot of people. So the impact on Hayfield as a community if that mill was to close would be devastating. Ash timber, like other mills, same as Yarrama, importing timber from other states to be viable and from overseas, where we lose control by getting rid of our sustainable Victorian timber industry to make sure the trees are used in the correct way. The council has tried for four years to learn why the government decided to ban native logging initially in 2019. Eventually, under freedom of information, it received some cabinet documents. So in 2019, after a couple of years with legal action and VCAT, we finally got some information. It was a lot of blacked out information and it was told that it was in cabinet confidence and they couldn't release any more. So the documents we got did not give us any, any closure on the decision at all. The documents do reveal the state government was influenced by public opinion and negative perceptions of logging. But the Agriculture Minister says the government has been open and transparent. Well, I refute that there's been secrecy. We've been very open about this, but there has been a convergence of um, circumstances and particularly the, the legal proceedings and people being stood down for a long period of time that has um, brought this issue to a head. So there's nothing complex about this. It's fairly straightforward. In Hayfield, Australian Sustainable Hardwoods has invested tens of millions of dollars in equipment to enable even small offcuts to be moulded into high strength beams and feature grade flooring for high end buildings. There's very little wood, a little fibre that doesn't go into a high end valuable use that is a long term carbon store. That's the key to what we do. 
with no access to local hardwood. The company is now bringing logs from Tasmania and the United States. We're importing raw oak out of the United States and we're manufacturing with that in Australia. But that is expensive and um, to do, we're bringing it a long way, but it's the only way we can substitute for the wood we're now missing from Victoria. At nearby Yarram, Radial Timber Australia has also invested some $30 million in high-tech machinery and planted several thousand hectares of hardwood plantations. The company was on track to harvest only plantation timber by the 2030 deadline. Now, to replace local wood, it's currently trucking logs from Queensland as a stopgap measure until their own plantations can be harvested. Forestry Australia says the knock-on effects of the end of local logging are already sounding alarm bells about imported timber. Imports have already increased by 40%, and that's from countries like the US, China, Brazil and Indonesia. The majority of those imports are coming from countries where the environmental index is actually lower than Australia's environmental standards. So that's something that we should really be concerned about when we think about you know, our own moral responsibility. Ecologist and forestry academic, Dr Chris Taylor, from the Australian National University Environment School disputes those figures. Well, what we're seeing with timber imports is we've seen a decline from countries like Indonesia and Malaysia, particularly in dressed uh, sawnwood. You know, this is the Australian Bureau of Agricultural Resource Economics and Sciences, ABES. It's their data. We've seen a decline in those imports. Dr Tyron Venn, an agricultural and natural resource economist at the University of Queensland, who has also studied forestry systems in Australia and internationally, says we need to consider the real cost of international timber. China imports, well, they get their logs uh, from places like Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Ghana, Thailand, Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia. They process those products and we buy it from China. We also import a lot of products from Malaysia and Indonesia. We know that plantation timbers and native forest timbers from Malaysia and timber are associated with the decline of the orangutan, Malayan tiger and other endangered species in, in Asia. He and others argue closing Australia's regulated renewable forest industry will not only worsen greenhouse emissions, but it will have dire environmental consequences here and abroad. We need to be considering the biodiversity and carbon impacts of our native forest management decisions at a global scale, not just a local or regional scale, because the economic reality of the world that we live in is that decisions made locally have ramifications internationally. But Dr Taylor sees the decision as a victory for the local environment. It's a really good decision. The government needs to be congratulated to, to taking this bold step. It was a very courageous step, one that was you know, long overdue. For decades, prominent ecologist Professor David Lindemeyer and other scientists have argued timber harvesting is destructive to the environment and must end, or risk jeopardising species such as the critically endangered leadbeater's possum. Ecologist Professor David Lindenmeyer has studied Leadbeater's possum habitat for three decades. He's highly critical of the logging practices in this forest. We have recommended a one kilometre buffer around every known location for this animal. And that's based on the science of understanding how big the colonies are, how much forest these animals need to forage, and the highly negative impacts of logging on this species. Other forest scientists reject that. Michelle Freeman from Forestry Australia took us to a patch of regrown forest that had been logged in the early 1990s. And you've been able to show that this is still a really good habitat for a whole range of animals? Yeah, surveys in this area have found leadbeater's possums, greater gliders. Um, there's a diversity of age classes here, so um, that provides a range of different structures and habitats for, for different species including acacia in the understory for leadbeater's possum. Michelle Freeman believes closing native forests is at odds with world's best practice, including the International Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. It's internationally 
countries are actually investing in strategies to better actively manage their forests, including sustainable timber harvesting and approaches like ecological thinning and boutique timber harvesting operations, because it's recognised that those things are actually a really important part of the equation in combating climate change and providing renewable resources to society that mean that we don't have to rely so heavily on things like concrete steel and other non-renewable resources. Environmental groups believe plantations can and must replace native timber. This is a big change for regional communities, particularly people who live in these regions and have been working in the industry sometimes for generations. What we need to see is a rapid move to greater utilisation of the plantation resource that is already growing here in Victoria to support families and workers in the industry and support the sawmills that wish to stay open ongoing. The state government promised more plantations when it announced the 2030 shutdown of logging four years ago. In the 2019 announcement, there was to be mass amounts of plantation timber. There is not one seedling that has been planted yet, so that promise of, of sustainable plantation timber hasn't been delivered either. Victoria's native timber industry officially ends on January 1st. The state government has allocated $200 million to workers and communities to help them adjust to life after logging. We've got a whole range of people that need to be considered during this transition period and we're about getting on with it and making sure that this is a fair transition for forestry workers here in Victoria. They'll be doing their utmost to survive. Hayfield is very, very dependent on timber. We're going to be trying to find our way, our way through this and I think we'll be successful, provided the government help us turbocharge that program.